The requirements for 5G systems go well beyond the capabilities and performance of LTE systems. 5G systems need to achieve higher data rates. They need to do this with lower latency network accesses. And the cost and power budgets for these systems drive the need for more energy efficient implementations. Now, systems will achieve higher data rates using much larger bandwidths to communicate. This is driven from all the new applications in 5G wireless that extend the scope of what's being connected. Now, since the available bandwidth in the spectrum up through 6 GHz is not sufficient to satisfy these requirements, the operating frequency bands move up into the millimeter wave range. With the much smaller wavelengths at these higher frequency bands, implementations with many more antenna elements per system within very small form factors are in play. MathWorks tools can be used to explore trade-offs, model systems, and make the right design choices early on in your project when it's the most cost-effective to perform these changes. We'll focus on the system between the baseband precoding on the transmit side, through the antenna arrays and propagation channels, through the baseband combining on the receive side. It's very important to see these subsystems together. Not only does it help bring different engineering disciplines together earlier in the design cycle, it also allows design partitioning across multiple subsystems, providing more flexibility in your system. For example, you can find the best solution across the antenna design, the RF design, or the signal processing system, wherever it might be easiest to implement. A large antenna array can be used to add spatial signal processing to perform line of sight beamforming and direction of arrival and estimation. And these types of algorithms can be used to improve SINR, to reduce the impact of interference signals, and to locate UEs within a cell. The large array can also be used to operate in a MIMO mode where unique data streams are sent from the transmitter at a base station and subsequently recovered at the receiver. This brings us to spatial multiplexing. Assuming we characterize the channel, we can use MIMO systems enabled by large arrays to increase the channel capacity. A pre-coding is used to realize this type of system. In an all-digital system, you have the ultimate flexibility. As the array size grows, an all-digital system is not always practical. This drives us to partition the beamforming function across digital and RF designs, which is referred to as hybrid beamforming. So what is hybrid beamforming? Beamforming is done in two stages, the RF beamforming and digital beamforming make up the complete beamforming set. This is about a trade-off and balancing the trade-off between performance, power, and implementation complexity. That's how the system costs go down. We only need as many RF chains as the number of TX data streams, as opposed to having the same number of RF chains dedicated one per element. So in the end, the number of transmit antennas greatly exceeds the number of RF chains and with this beamforming mix, we can make it work. And there's a lot of different architectures to explore. And what we try to do is make it easy for you to look at some of these cases. So in the first case, we'd say that we map each RF chain to each transmit element. We might map each RF chain to only a subset of elements. And in the case of the multi-user environment, we have virtual sectors where we're making combinations of connections between antenna elements and RF chains. But the common theme here is that we end up with less transmit receive modules than we have in terms of the number of elements, which again allows us to get away with using less hardware and simpler system design. Different realizations have different complexity trade-offs and part of having this modeling environment is the advantage would be to actually explore some of these trade-offs and figure out where your system needs to be. And in summary, the antenna RF design signal processing development can be done for wireless systems in a single environment. Hopefully you've seen that how modeling can help define architectures for hybrid beamforming. We have some very in-depth examples on each of these, including the massive IMO case for multi-user. Thank you very much.